Hello, my name is Professor Paul Gruen. I'm an adjunct professor at Quinnipiac University. And this video is the second video for the ICM 590 class on project planning. This one is focused on project definition. Why is project definition so important? Basically, it keeps things on track to know what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. If I told you, or if I hired you to build a house, I want you to build me a house. And let's have three bedrooms and uh, living room, dining room, kitchen. And we agreed on a price and a basic layout. But then as the house was being built, I said, you know, I forgot I want a garage and I want a sunroom. And while we're at it, can you put a widow's walk on the roof? And can you do this, that, and the other thing? And all of a sudden, but I want you to do it for the same price. And that all always happens. It really allows you to not have scope creep and it allows to expectations all the way around to happen. Now, back in the good old days, a handshake was enough. But nowadays, oftentimes the handshake, well, I hope it's still enough among friends and I hope that a lot of projects at a small level, hey, can you can I borrow your lawnmower or something like that? We can still have a handshake on that. And I hope the handshake doesn't go away. But for a lot of projects, especially where money is involved, and especially where different people are involved, and that we really need a sense of a document, and we need an agreed upon document for what that definition is. So one of the documents I'm going to go over is the project charter. Now in this case, I'm using an actual project from a project that I did at my full-time job at Roadrunner University. And all the names have been changed, all the dollars have been removed, and the dates have been removed. Uh, but basically, the project charter that I'm going to show you is a real project charter from a real project that I did, oh, that'd have to be now three years ago. So I hope that what will happen is you'll see the practical implementation of a project charter. Now, by now, hopefully, you have already watched Phil Simon's video which goes over the points on pages 46 and 47 in the uh, project management book, Absolute Beginner's Guide to Project Management. Yes, if you don't have this, you need it, and you should be reading it. It's actually very well done. So Phil Simon went over pages 46 and 47 and talked about the various components. And I'm not going to list them out, and I don't want to be redundant to the video that he had done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a project charter that actually has all those components built in. But before we do that, I'm going to show you something real quick that has helped me manage all my projects and um, hopefully you can develop a similar system for yourself. So what's on the screen now should not be new to any of you. It's Outlook. It's my Quinnipiac Outlook account. But I have found that most of the projects I deal with, whether it's the project of teaching this class or other classes, or any of the various projects that I do at Roadrunner University, that every single project, every single thing, matter of fact, the honey-do list that I do at home, that those projects all have some sense of email. And at that point, what you need to do is organize your email so it's not just in one big bucket. Notice here that in my inbox, I have some projects from today, from two weeks ago, and three weeks ago. These are things that I leave in my inbox that I want to be front and center, that I don't want to lose this stuff, and I know that I still need to deal with it and remember um, that this is the hot, hot potatoes on my list. Then what I do is I have a, a folder called My Stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, my stuff, I then create a bunch of subfolders, and the naming conventions of those folders are very important to me because what happens is Outlook will sort alphabetically. Notice that there is, at the top, I have ICM 505-213 Fall DC, ICM 505-213 Fall DL, ICM 590-2013. These three folders are all of the contents of the emails that I get related to this class. I also have a new class I'll be teaching, 507, um, in the spring. I do a lot of stuff, and I, I want to keep this O'Reilly folder uh, front and center. I do a lot of stuff with O'Reilly Publishing. 
and then personal keeps folder and then I have a series of folders with the QU prefix on it and the QU prefix then basically general topics interactive media website QU online and tech announcements then I have a bunch of folders with staff has a prefix and then the, the people name and then down at the bottom I have Z's for each of these has a prefix for these are classes that I've taught in the past now at some point I'll probably create a folder called past classes and put all those folders in it and maybe I'll create if I get more staff emails I'll create a folder called staff QU staff and I'll put all those folders in it now let's take a look at the 590 folder as I open that up if you haven't noticed in 590 we're getting a lot of emails on um, for the workspace and for the discussions so here's my workspace folder with all of those notifications for workspace here's my discussions folder and then here's all the notifications that I get for the discussions here's a copy of all the announcements that I send out to the class and then each one of you there's a folder for your stuff if I click on Xander I had a quick email thread with him and I think Laura I, we exchanged an email it's still early in the semester and I'm sure these folders will be getting filled up by by many of you so organizing your emails helps you organize your project just a little tip and thought that you might like that the other thing is if you do a Google search on project management tire swing project management tire swing you will find the cartoon especially project management cartoon tire swing you'll find the various versions of this cartoon this cartoon here is a good reason why we need good project management because if we don't have good project definition and good project management the customer may be saying hey I just want a tire swing but who knows what's going to be promised what's going to be created what's going to be designed and here's just a couple of versions of that tire swing cartoon that I I grabbed I've seen this for years out there and there's actually various versions of it with different themes but um, Shakespeare I believe in King Lear said uh, in one's just there is truth so I think while this is kind of funny this the the sad the sad truth is that this um, this often is a, a very accurate picture of what goes on okay welcome to Roadrunner University this is actually a project that I did for Roadrunner University about three years ago I was the technical lead and the chief implementer in this project the goal of this project was actually to implement new file transfer servers for for the university and this document was the project charter and this um, project charter was actually created by one of the stakeholders in the project prior to approval for funding this project this document ended up being the document that was presented to the committee that actually approved the funding for for the project and then the project actually happened so while we were dealing in the early fiscal year we prepared these various project charters which have various project definitions and there are tons of them at Roadrunner University that um, get prepared a lot of them get rejected because there isn't funding or people um, think that the scope of things aren't, aren't appropriate or they don't fit into the bigger picture so at this point this charter is the document that one says this is something we want to do can we spend money on it and two it becomes the guideline for everything we do first of all we have you'll take a notice that there is in this document we, we record all of the changes to the document and where this document is located we also if this if a change is needing approvals we add approvers to this document and people basically say I've seen the changes and I agree we've talked about stakeholders and the key players the owners of the project the project sponsors name goes here the relationship manager the person who's kind of the in-between person between the technical and the functional people the project lead who I work closely with and then the project name <coughs> excuse me project classification these letters a B S and M they represent a funding model for Roadrunner University so at that point we know what kind of the budget guidelines is for this project the project purpose is listed 
And that's important because at a very high level, at a very high level, people need to know what's, what's the purpose of the project. And basically, we wanted to reduce risk or failure uh, because of the various systems that we had. We um, needed to basically improve the quality of how data was being transferred. We had already agreed on a piece of software from the Acme company, and we had already actually purchased it. So part of the goal of this project was now that we bought the software, let's put it into uh, into use. We also focused on two processes. Our batch transfer process is dealing with our Oracle eBusiness system. That's basically our accounting software. And then we had a system which was actually used for ad hoc file transfers, which was kind of a person to person that if I needed to send you a large file and it needed to be done securely, that we would do it uh, through our old ad hoc file transfer process. That that process actually was running on some really old alpha servers. They were costing us way too much money. They were too old and we needed to be so using something that was more current and more appropriate. Where does this fit in to the overall plan of the university was is an important what's the strategic def, um, direction for this project how does it fit into to all of that whoops wrong tool and that 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 tool that basically for us it was risk for data it was lifestyle replacement that means all the systems that we have that we make sure we're able to maintain them and keep them current. And we knew that with the upcoming work that we were doing in ITS, that we actually, that a good solid FTP server, good fi solid file transfer system was going to be important for the future of the university. Because basically we had a bunch of hacks that had been around for quite a while. We also needed to improve the cost and the time to deliver the solutions. We wanted it to be um, stable and secure. And also, probably one of the biggest things was dealing with a lot of the um, health care laws and HIPAA and things like that, that we needed to make sure that we, since um, Roadrunner University is a high research institute, we needed to make sure all the data was, was um, handled securely. Metrics. We needed the ability to measure what we knew would be the result of a successful install. And basically that was being used by the, um, we were getting rid of Unix accounts. We were going to increase the time to set up systems. We were adding a better ad hoc system. And we were just basically, we were also going to have a new and improved look and feel and the usability was going to be improved. Sometimes metrics and projects are kind of an objective thing, but the more measurable you can be, the better. What's the scope? At this point here, this was the list of things we knew we were going to do. We were going to implement a certain software. We were going to establish standard, stand, standards for network and data security. We are going to create a blueprint to standardize how we do all of these type of file transfers. We are going to assign ownership to this system because at the end of it, we could put something in. Who's going to own it and support it? And then we focus on 16 mission critical batch processes that were in place on the old system that needed to get moved over. Quite honestly, there were a bunch more, but this was the biggest amount of systems. And if we got these done in the project, we'd be doing good and the other ones would be easy. We were dealing with our ad hoc person to person. We we're going to create procedures, standards, and best practices come up with reporting capabilities, we're going to deactivate the old stuff, and we're going to have to train and transition support to the new people. So we had a real cl clear set of deliverables for this project. Then also what happened was we had to be sure that we were able to, to draw what was out of scope. What was the stuff that we weren't going to do. No other processes before beyond the list of 13. We weren't going to automatically convert any of the stuff from the old ad hoc. We were just going to let that fly. And so we really set up a list of the things we weren't going to do because we didn't want to get busted later, say, well, why didn't you do this? Well, we planned it. We knew that things weren't going to get done. 
Also, what are the high-level requirements? We knew that we were going to need new users to uh, be involved in this. We knew that the solution uh, must provide a comprehensive means to process the metrics of these file transfers. We really wanted to make sure that we were able to have a better control over how, what data got moved from point A to point V. And we also wanted to conform to industry standards, mainly in the area of security, because we really needed to make sure that our data was safe. You read too much stuff in the, in the news today about uh, data being unsafe, and we, we wanted to be proactive on that. Who's our key stakeholders? Here's a list of the people and the players that definitely were, um, were, were the drivers of this project and they basically would, would lead the direction. What were the risks and the assumptions and the constraints of this project? We knew that getting other people involved for testing and programming was going to take an effort. We knew that we were going to need the functional owners in various departments to help us with this work. We knew that resources were going to be required for training and communication. And we also assumed that we weren't going to do anything beyond that which was listed in the 13. There were risks about all the other technical teams not having capacity. There was a risk that we really didn't have an owner for all of these old systems. There were constraints. The biggest constraint is always funding. The next biggest constraint is time and resources. And in this case, we weren't even allowed budget for any additional training and implementation. Governance, basically, how is the project going to be managed? It was going to be managed by the steering committee, which meant monthly, and then the project committee, which meant weekly. And this was a list of those people. And now schedule. One of the things that's really important, you might not know what you're going to do on any given day at this level, but you're basically saying, I plan to accomplish this work in, in this case, seven months. And here are the phases of this work, a planning phase, an analysis, a design phase. So at that point, you say, OK, here's the, here's the box. Here's the time frame of that basic box of when I hope to get this done by. From there, I'm going to break it up into high level tasks and then uh, high level areas and then break down the tasks later. When we get into um, work breakdown schedules, work plan breakdown schedules, this seven months then gets very detailed to the sometimes to the point of what you're going to do when. Then also the assignment of resources. Here, the rough order of magnitude for resources, we break it off into percentages of an FTE. An FTE is a full-time equivalent. So basically, we're able to figure out funding models for each of those, those, those people. And then what hardware, software, professional services, and what other money do we plan to spend later? And then ultimately, the buck's going to have to stop somewhere. The project sponsor, the... Um, business relationship manager and the program project lead had to sign this document and said, yes, this is the plan. So Phil Simon gave you a really good overview of pages 46, 47 in Absolute Beginner's Guide of Project Management. What I hope that this video did was show you how those academic principles that are laid out very clearly in the book actually turned into a real document that actually turned out into a real project that actually is still running today at Roadrunner University. I hope that you understand and you see that a lot of the stuff we're talking about in this class and reading in the book is real stuff. And whether, no matter what size the project is, sometimes you might just need to write it down on a napkin or an index card. Other times you might need a 20-page document or more. Just think about the project definition that, would, that had to have been required when man went to the moon or the space shuttle w was, was launched. Think about some of those great um, technology advancements. And you can't just do that on a napkin. And you need to know where you're going to end up. I guess the high-level goal was get a man on the moon, and they definitely did that. I remember that in 1969. Thank you, and have a great day.